Hello and welcome back. And today is going to be a real tetchy episode where I'm going to be really annoyed at people. So sit down and listen. Hello and welcome back. And today we're going to talk about hot spares and raid six. Two subjects that I think 90% of the audience just went out the door. I actually heard you shut the door and leave the room while I was talking. I get it. It's not sexy. It's not interesting. It's a dull, dull, enterprisey type subject. But the reason I want to talk about it today is it seems to be a trending thing in the comments of these videos. There's a, you know, dare I say it, there's quite a few comments down there. And some of them argue that hot spares and raid sixes are either pointless or they are tremendous overkill that no one's ever going to use. And more and more I read a comment like that and I get genuinely annoyed because I think Raid 6 and hot spares are things that a lot more consumers should, if not utilise, then should at least consider. Because they have a lot more bearing than they take for granted. Take for, take for example this comment. Hopefully on screen there is a comment I saw before. And I, you know, agree with a lot of things in this comment. This isn't me putting a comment on screen and going, everyone heap scorn. This isn't what I'm doing here. But despite the fact that a lot of the stuff that I'm seeing here I agree with, there are some very intrinsic points about this which are, if not wrong, then they are being wildly, you know, miscalculated, okay? So the reason I'm bundling RAID 6 and Hot Spares together is they both target a very specific kind of user. If anyone of you guys have ever read Shawshank Redemption, uh, you know, Stephen King, I've written it here on the channel. There's this, they talk about this idea of a rich man who's got a whole art gallery full of paintings in his home and there's a tornado coming nearby. There are two kinds of people. There is one kind of person that will say, well, I'm not going to take these paintings down. They might, you know, get damaged or something. But also, they're works of art. They're beautiful. Nothing's going to happen to this thing. It's, it's too perfect. I've got too many pieces of art here. There's no way this hurricane's going to come near my home. And God wouldn't let him. And it's just too much of an injustice to happen. Suppose there was a house full of rare paintings and sculptures and fine old antiques, Red. And suppose the guy who owned the house heard that there was a monster of a hurricane headed right at it. One of those two kinds of men just hopes for the best. The hurricane will change course, he says to himself. No right-thinking hurricane would ever dare wipe out all these Rembrandts, my two Degas horses, my Grant Woods, and my Bentons. Furthermore, God wouldn't allow it. And if worse comes to worst, they're insured. That's one sort of man. The other sort just assumes that hurricane is going to tear right through the middle of his house. If the weather bureau says the hurricane just changed course, this guy assumes it'll change back in order to put his house on ground zero again. This second type of guy knows there's no harm in hoping for the best, as long as you're prepared for the worst. Hope for the best prepare for the worst, okay? Hope for the best, prepare for the worst. And that's where Raid 6 and Hot Spares live. And I know I'm waxing lyrical to talk about easy concept, but I am going somewhere with this, so sit tight. Now, Raid 6, for those that aren't aware, is when you have two discs of failure protection, two safety nets, if you will. And a lot of people might wonder, with a Raid 6, well, if one drive fails, the other ones are still working. I can still use the NAS in a degraded state. I can still access all of my data on there. I've got another drive. I'll just replace the drive that's in there in that RAID 5. Why am I worried? There's several reasons why you should at least give it more thought than that. The same goes for hot spares. When you have a RAID configuration such as this 6 bay, say you have a RAID 5 on five of those disks and you have one drive as a hot spare. And a lot of people would say, that's tremendous overkill. Why have that? Just have them all as a RAID 5. And if a drive dies, you've got time. You can slam in another one. A few things. One, think about why RAID failures happen, other than me putting that drive down slightly in, uh, uh, less smooth than I could have. First and foremost, some RAID 5s happen because of power failure in your home environment or your business environment. And you can have active read write operations or the drive being interacted with. And it can result in the whole system shutting down and the drive not being ready for that action. It can actually harm the drive inside. Also, you can have surges delivered to the system, which can basically overblow the system's PSU, maybe an internal PSU, or create an internal malfunction, maybe even power related. 
This can affect all of the drives inside in a read-write operation. Now, you can avoid this with one of these big things called a UPS. It's a big old box, for those that aren't aware, that has a bunch of plug points on the back. And this device is put on the floor because I'm a very old man. What it does is it connects into your mains power and all of the devices connected to it are powered through it. And it also has a battery pack inside, which in the event of a power failure or a power surge or whatever, it doesn't affect all the other devices. And also, if the power is cut off, all the other connected devices continue to run off the battery pack and they can have in their own way either to all manually shut down one by one as soon as the UPS tells them to shut down or they can be for continued use and then you can manually shut them down if you choose. Now, that costs in most cases more than any hard drive, okay? So a lot of people will say, oh, why well, have an extra drive? Just get a UPS. You've just spent all that money, so you've agreed at least that these two things can be problematic and things that you should provision for. But a massively overlooked thing, and something that was mentioned in that original comment, was about batches. Now, for the, again, for those that aren't aware, this hard drive here, for example, this is a, a Synology own hard drive. It's actually a Toshiba drive with Synology's firmware on board. This is the HAT500. Now, that drive, yeah, put it in there. Great, put a few of them in there. Lovely stuff. But when that's produced at the manufacturing level, they're produced in batches. They're shipped in containers of at least 20, like this one. You might not be buying all 20, you might be only buying one, maybe two, maybe three, maybe four, go nuts. But when they're in the point of manufacture, they are produced in the tens, twenties, fifties, hundreds, thousands. Now, if there's a fault at the production line level, if there's a fault on a drive, it's not impossible that that is going to be in the same fault on every drive in that run, in that batch. And a lot of people buy two, four, eight drives from one eShop. And they buy them, and of course, they just buy the drives. But they don't realise it's almost certain they've come out of the same box. So when you bought them from the same box, there's a small possibility that the thing that caused that drive to fail after X amount of time is exactly the same thing that's gonna happen every drive in there. But you can't ask an eShop to just say, can you do me a favor, I'd like to buy eight drives. I'd like eight drives from completely different boxes and I'll check because all drives have batch numbers and uh, firmware runs and dates. So there's ways to distinguish whether drives have been produced in a line or they've been produced from different boxes or crates and containers. Very few eShops will entertain that because they would need to keep stock levels in the thousands to facilitate these small orders to ensure that drives are taken from different batches. On top of that, even if they were able to facilitate that as an option, that still doesn't mean that that issue was in that box of 20. It could have been whatever happened with that run from those raw materials that were being used for 10 minutes. Whatever the raw materials are being used, they're still going to be coming from a source. So for me, that is the most compelling reason why RAID 6 and hot spares are something that home users should entertain. Because you might fully populate this in a RAID 5 environment and you've got one drive of failure protection in the case of that drive potentially dying. And then you go, oh, well, one drive stopped, but I'm in a degraded state. I've got another drive knocking around. I can slam that in there. It's only going to take four, six, eight, 12 hours to rebuild my RAID. Four, six, eight, 12 hours, one of those other drives might die. And if that drive dies during the RAID rebuild, it's game over. You've lost your data. It's gone. Okay? So, whether you are considering a hot spare or a RAID 6, or you've dismissed it out of kind because you're convinced the retailer has told you they've pulled individual drives from individual carts from individual runs at individual uh, batch lots. Madness. If, if you are happy with that, that's fine. But don't just dismiss hot spares and RAID 6s because you think they're needless. Don't think, oh, I've got plenty of time. Because for all you know, the thing that caused the RAID degradation is just gonna domino off those other drives. And too many people overlook this for SSDs, for hard drives, for anything. Don't just assume 
you've been given that extra time. Don't be the guy that looks at the fuel with the little ticker over near empty, but not quite empty, and going, ah, there's always a little bit more in the tank. Drive on. Don't be that guy. At least understand that there may be a thing that could cause damage long term to your data and the potential loss of all of these. If you've already decided to provision a safety net, make it the best safety net that you can afford. Make it the best safety net with all considerations in mind. You can't plan everything, but you can plan enough. What do we say? Hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Thank you for watching. Click a like if you've enjoyed this video. I know it's a bit rambly, but it's something I'm hearing a lot in the comments, and I just wanted to hit this subject hard. If you do want to learn more about these subjects and the best ways to provision you and your data long term, click subscribe. We talk about data every day here on NAS Compares. We've even got the free advice section. Go to the comments and go into the description. There's a link to the free advice section over at NAS Compares. It's manned by two guys, me and Eddie the web guy. We answer every email. We are humans. And it may take us next a day or two to answer your emails. We're only human. But we answer everyone with free, impartial, you know, utterly free advice. There's some donate buttons. It'd be lovely if you touch them, but you don't have to. And if you don't know what's the right storage amount for you, or whether you should go RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID 10, or hot spare, whatever, or even buy a UPS, that horrible thing that weighs a ton. Whatever you're going to do, you can just ask us and we'll give you impartial advice. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.